Hi, this is Ryan from Lakeshore Cryotronics with what I hope to be a brief overview of the Model 372 AC resistance bridge, the successor to the widely popular Model 370, which really has been the industry standard now uh, for ultra low temperature measurements for well over a decade. Uh, so quickly for those unfamiliar with the concept of an AC resistance bridge, uh, this basically just refers to the fact that this particular unit uh, measures resistance by using a sinusoidal AC current source and then a lock-in to measure the resulting voltage. From this measurement, uh, the actual resistance of the connected load can then be calculated. So, uh, you might be asking, uh, why would we go through all this extra effort? Um, well, uh, AC signals basically have several advantages over the more traditional uh, DC measurement techniques. Firstly, uh, we can detect phase changes as a result of loads that aren't purely resistive. So, Things like parasitic capacitance or inductance can be identified and now measured. Uh, also, we can use much smaller signals, thereby reducing the amount of power that needs to be dissipated into the load under test. This is actually incredibly important when measuring sensors uh, or materials that are only a fraction of a degree above absolute zero. Uh, this is where even a small amount of added power can cause unwanted self-heating. So uh, unfortunately, there are other factors that also contribute to self-heating. This includes um, external noise sources, which can be picked up through instrumentation wiring and then passed through the sample or sensor. Uh, and this can actually be enough to cause this self-heating, um, which is where our patented balanced current source comes into play. It makes sure that noise never sees a viable path through the load, and the fully isolated measurement circuitry inside the 372 makes sure that noise won't be introduced by the instrument itself. So altogether, this makes the 372 the perfect device for measuring many different types of impedances at ultra-low temperatures, where input, par input power must be kept to an absolute minimum. So with that out of the way, uh, let's take a closer look at the instrument. On the front, you'll see uh, a nice big screen for looking at measurement results. Uh, we also have uh, the more modern Lakeshore button uh, configuration. This is actually really popular uh, on the 336, the 350, the 224, so we've had a lot of success with this layout. It's slightly customized for the 372 because of the, uh, the extra um, uh, ranges that we have on this device. But um, all functions are within easy, easy reach, just to, uh, so you don't have to hunt around in menus for different functions. Uh, my favorite one is the uh, all off panic button which basically um, one press and all the heat is shut down instantly. So um, this is for cases where you might have accidentally set the heater to a too high a power and um, instead of letting your experiment run out of, run out of control while you hunt around in menus to find the off switch, uh, just one press and they all shut down. So this will save you a lot of time in waiting for your experiment to cool back down. And we'll have a, a better look at this a little bit later, but for right now, let's have a look at the back of the instrument. Working from left to right, uh, you'll first of all, you'll see the main measurement input, which uh, is actually split into two inputs on, on this particular product. Uh, all we've done is we have current uh, supply going out to the sensor or device, and on a separate connector, we have the voltage measurement uh, being made. And we've basically done this just to, uh, because we are dealing with such small signals here, so um, both of these connectors now have the additional uh, driven, gu driven guard. And this basically helps to keep cable capacitance down and basically give a more stable measurement. Uh, you'll, you'll also see a scan control port. That's basically for connecting through, uh, connecting this, these measurement inputs through to uh, a scanner. So if you want to measure more than one device at a time, you can um, hook this up to a scanner, which will scan through different measurements one by one. Uh, but if you don't want to, if you don't have uh, that many uh, inputs to measure, what you can do is you can just connect a sensor or device straight up to this port right here. So uh, the flexibility is there. Moving on, next to the main measurement input, you'll see the, uh, the control input, which we've actually added to the 372. This wasn't on the 370. Uh, it's a completely new, dedicated input for the purpose of uh, basically controlling um, temperature while you might be doing other activities with the main measurement input. So um, the idea being that you will uh, connect this through to a, to a main temperature sensor inside your experiment and continually watch that rather than 
on the 370, where what you'd have to do is uh, scan to, the, to, the, to, the, uh, to a temperature control sensor and then take your eye off it while you go and do your other measurements. Uh, while this happens, the system may heat or cool, something might, may, might happen without you being aware of it. So what we've done, dedicated control input, you're always watching it full time, controlling, making sure your, your experiment is stable, which gives you the option to then scan through your different measurement inputs for the data that you actually want. So um, the first thing you might notice about this input is that there's only one connector. Uh, we've done this for a couple of reasons. Um, one, to simplify the connection. Uh, it also, one of the downsides though is that we've lost the driven guard. So um, uh, you may have issues with cable capacitance if the cables are very, very long, but providing you keep your experiment close, uh, what this port can do is, um, is provide that dedicated uh, temperature control uh, without taking up your main measurement input. Um, what you'll also uh, notice when using this is that uh, there are some limited ranges on this, on this particular input. So rather than going all the way from 2 milliohms all the way up to 2 mega ohms, it's actually designed specifically for a temperature sensor. So we're talking tens, hundreds, and thousands of ohms. Um, so this basically has, has, uh, has resulted in a dedicated full-time temperature control input uh, that hopefully will make your experiments run faster, smoother, and provide a lot more value to you in the end. Uh, moving right along, you'll see uh, we have a, a monitor and reference output. These are basically just diagnostic outputs, so we don't need to spend too much time on them. Moving further along, <coughs> you'll see uh, the heater outputs. And this is something we're spending a bit more time on because uh, one of the new features that we've added to the 372 again is this uh, warm-up heater output. Uh, this output is actually it was a request from many customers asking for more power, more heater power out from the, than what the 370 could provide. So the 372 warm-up heater output is uh, up to 10 watts of power, which um, might not seem like a lot, especially in comparison to our 336, which has 100, 150 watts in some cases um, of output power. Uh, but 10 watts at very, very low temperature is actually quite a lot. Next to the heaters, you'll find connection points for up to two relays. Uh, these can be useful in many different situations. And finally, let's move across, uh, have a look at the various communication interfaces. Uh, in this case, this includes Ethernet, USB, and GPIB. Uh, multiple functions can be performed using these ports, which includes loading temperature curves, sending commands, or uh, recording experimental data. Okay, so now let's have a look at the unit in operation. And if you give me just a few moments, I can connect it up and turn it on. Okay, so now that we're all connected up, uh, let's start by turning the 372 on. And I'd just like to mention too, you might notice some flickering on the screen uh, just as a result of the cameras that we're using, but actually there's no flicker in real life, so uh, this is quite a nice image to look at. Uh, you'll also notice that this scanner has made an, uh, an appearance. So this is the 3726 16 channel scanner. Uh, this would normally be placed closer to the experiment space, um, and what you'll do is break out from up to 16 sensors here, and connect this back to the 372 to make measurements. Um, currently we just have eight sensors connected up, or well, actually they're resistors connected up inside these blocks here, just as a, a way for us to make measurements and, and show you that today. Okay, <clears throat> so to start off, if you look down here, you'll see that uh, we're currently on channel one. So this is channel one for the scanner. Uh, if you um, are currently looking at this, you'll see we've got around about 290 ohms. Uh, so this is roughly the resistor that we've got attached here. Now what you can do is, um, for each channel they are independent, so you can change the excitation levels if you want to. Uh, if you feel that there might be some self-heating or you want some more resolution, you can change to different current levels. Uh, you can also, if uh, you decide that the range might not be appropriate in resistance, you can increase the range to higher resistance ranges. Um, or reduce it down. Because ideally what you want to do is 
maximize your measurement while also minimizing the amount of power you need to put into the device. So this is channel one. We have um, some other channels, channel two, channel three, etc. And you'll notice that these are all in, um, we call them sensor units, but it's basically in resistance. So you'll see this is uh, kilo ohms uh, before we we're in just plain old ohms. And this will go up to mega ohms and down to milli ohms and nano ohms if you're, if you're interested in that. Um, okay, so what we can also do is go to channel four, which I've currently set up as a temperature sensor. So it's also just a resistance, uh, but what we do is we have an internal curve that's, in, that's stored in the instrument, and it basically just allows us to transfer from sensor units or ohms across into temperature units, or Kelvin in this case. Uh, so at the moment we have a simulated scenario where the sensor is sitting at 320 millikelvin, and this basically shows some of the power of this unit that we can, um, that we can generate those numbers directly inside the instrument. Uh, another great feature of the 372, which is new, is the ability to um, identify uh, impedances that, are, that aren't just purely resistive, so quadrature measurements. And to get to that, we have a little bit of an experiment set up, which is nice. I have channel five, uh, which is just a resistor, but it also simulates some cable capacitance, some parasitic cable capacitance by having a little capacitor um, across the, the terminals as well. And what you can do is you can see that the resistance of this sensor is measured as um, 304 kilo ohms. But over here on the right hand side, you'll see uh, the quadrature measurement, which shows almost 80 or almost 90 kilo ohms of reactants as well. So that's an indication that something's wrong, that there's some, um, you know, in this case, parasitic capacitance in the line. And to show you how much of an effect that can have, on channel 7 here, I have that same resistor, but no capacitor in line. So now you'll see that the measurement's actually 330, so it's about 10% higher. So this can throw off measurements. So uh, the 372, now that you can identify this as, as an issue, you can identify, okay, there's something wrong with the measurements, there's some cable capacitance, and then it's sort of on you to try and figure out how to, how to remedy that. Um, <clears throat> so if we go back to uh, temperature units, uh, you can see this is currently set at, at 320 millikelvin. Uh, what we can then do, I don't have this hooked up at the moment, but if you had a heater connected uh, in the same system, then what you could do is uh, use this to create a set point. So say we wanted to, um, this is base temperature, and we wanted to get it up to 500 millikelvin for an experiment. You could go set point, set 500 millikelvin, and this would then use the internal PID closed control loop to, um, heat the system up to 500, Kelvin, 500 millikelvin and hold it there quite stably. Uh, we also have over here on the very right, a lot of other settings for things like um, input setup. So you can do things like change the name here. I've named this one sensor one, but you can name this whatever you want. Uh, you can also um, do all things, uh, uh, set up your PID control loops, um, you know, do things with your curve entry, and, and various other things that are, that are quite useful this instrument. So that's basically a, a quick overview of the performance or the operation of the instrument itself. There, there is a lot more you can do in this. You can change display modes, uh, and it's, it can be a, uh, uh, there, are, there is quite a lot of powerful features in here. So I don't have time to go over this today, but trust me, there's a reason the manual is so thick. <laughs> um, all right, so with that, let's move on to have a look at some of the accessories that are available with this instrument. Okay, so let's start by looking at the 3726 scanner. I have talked a bit about this today. Um, this is the device that you would use to um, uh, uh, you know, place closer to your experiment to break out from just one connection in to multiple sensor or material connections uh, out the other side. Um, you'll see that uh, we do have three inputs on this side. This would go, uh, this is the voltage, current, and scan control running back to uh, your 372. And on the other side, this is your connection point for up to 16 sensors. So this is a really important device, not just in the fact that you can scan through different channels uh, all by, with just one connection uh, to the scanner, but it also includes a pre-amplifiers. So um, if you do have quite a distance between your experiment space and your 372, 
then this basically just makes sure that the signals aren't, uh, aren't interfered with, they don't um, have additional noise added to them before it can get, make its way back into the instrument to be measured. So this is actually um, quite a good device, not just for the, the scanning through multiple channels, but for signal integrity as well. And these uh, scanners come in two different varieties. We have the 3726, uh, which really is just an extension of the, the measurement circuitry inside the 372. So it's mostly targeted at making multiple different temperature sensor measurements inside an environment. So um, there are usually quite a, a few different places you want to measure temperature inside a, a cryogenic system. So that's the main focus of this device here. It's, it's absolutely great uh, at making very, very low power measurements. Uh, there is also another scanner called the 3708. Uh, it's just been around for quite a while. It's in use with our uh, 370 as well. And its main focus is material characterization. So it has a very, very low noise figure. Um, not the best for um, making temperature sensor measurements because it does have a higher DC bias current than the, the 372 or the 3726. But uh, it can't be rivaled in, in making very, very accurate low resistance or very high resistance measurements. So between the 3726 and the 3708, you really have a lot of, uh, a lot of flexibility, a lot of options in, um, in augmenting the power of the, th uh, the 372. Uh, the scanner also comes with a, a mounting bracket. So uh, this is useful for mounting to your experiment space, normally because a lot of time you might not have a bench to put this on. Uh, you'll also get a scanner cable <clears throat> to run from the 372 to the scanner. Uh, by default, we have a few different options here. We have three meters, six meters, or 10 meters. If you'd like to um, run quite a way. In those longer runs, you just have to be a little bit uh, conscious of the potential to have uh, parasitic capacitance in the line with those longer runs. Uh, now, for those wishing to use the 372 in a backwards compatibility, format where you had a 370 in an experiment space and you just like to uh, swap, it, swap it out for something a little more, you know, a little more powerful. Uh, we do have a little adapter cable as well. This is just for plugging into the heater outputs so that you can connect to straight to BNC, which is what the format was in the 370s. So uh, with this attached, uh, this really does become a drop-in replacement for the 370. And um, then you just get to have the fun of what do I do with the control input? In addition to the heater adapter, there are also many other connectors that can be attached to the 372. A lot of these you'll receive with the 372 um, when it arrives. This, this will include the six pin DIN connectors. So this is for temperature sensors that you want to connect directly to the 372. Uh, it also includes some um, six pin and seven pin uh, terminal blocks. And that's just for the heaters, the relays. It's a very nice little screw terminal, so very quick and easy to install um, heaters and relays into the 372. If you're getting a scanner, uh, you'll also be supplied with some 25 pin DIN connectors uh, to feed sensors into, this, uh, into the scanner itself. And all of these are, are available to, to, um, to get separately if you do need um, additional ones in the future. Uh, the 372 also comes with, uh, well, has the option to get rack ears as well. If you do decide that you like to put the 372 inside a, um, a rack, uh, it's a 19 inch rack mountable and um, just basically helps to improve the flexibility of the device. You can have it on the bench top in a rack, really uh, wherever you'd like to put it. Uh, so that basically comes to the end of our brief overview of the 372. Uh, it's, this really does show it's a very flexible, reliable, high quality instrument. Um, uh, please feel free to uh, contact sales to ask any questions you might have about the instrument or uh, keep looking further on the website. There is a lot of really good details on there. Uh, thank you very much and we'll see you soon.